Mole, M O L L E. Mole, the brushless shaving cream with a special protective film that guards your face, presents the Mole Mystery Theater. <laughs> Tonight, Mole, the brushless shaving cream which puts face protection first, brings you another in the series of programs which puts mystery and excitement first. Each Tuesday night at this time, you hear one of the great mystery stories selected either from the famous classics or from the best of the moderns by Mr. Jeffrey Barnes. Mr. Barnes, having made a lifelong study of mystery fiction, is a connoisseur of fine detective stories. Mr. Barnes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mole Mystery Theater. Tonight's story is unusual in many ways. First, it is an original mystery written especially for radio. Secondly, it is the work of a young man who has never before written a mystery story. The writer is Corporal Frederick Matho. Corporal Matho walked into my office one morning with a script under his arm. I promised him I would read his story. I did. And I got the shock of my life. Here was a first-time effort, and yet, in my opinion, it ranks with the very best in mystery literature. So it is with a great deal of pride that we now present for the first time anywhere a story written by Corporal Frederick Mato and entitled The Comic Strip Murder. <laughs> Friends, before our Mole Mystery Theater play begins, listen. Listen to the sound of a weapon fired at our men by the enemy, but aimed by someone here in America who talked too much. Yes, American, when someone here at home talks carelessly, it helps the enemy aim his bombs and guns and other weapons at our men. So don't you be that someone. If you know any war secret that has not been reported on the radio or in the newspapers, Keep it a mystery and help keep our men alive. And now to our play, the comic strip murder. It is evening. Two people sit on a dimly lighted terrace of a New York penthouse apartment. One is the district attorney, the other a woman who looks tense and frightened. It's 11.30. And my husband's going to murder me at midnight, Mr. Hanley. Tonight? Mrs. Stetson. You think being married to a comic strip artist has given me an overactive imagination? Well, I thought so, too, when I first went to see you, but not anymore. Look, Mr. Hanley, let me tell you the whole story. These past few weeks, Mark has been drawing Buzz O'Keefe with blood on his pen. My blood. You follow Buzz O'Keefe in the morning telegram, don't you, Mr. Hanley? Mm -hmm. Why, of course, everybody does. You've eaten up his lurid tail, one bloody episode after another. Well, I've lived with that comic strip for nine years. It's been Buzz O'Keefe this and Buzz O'Keefe that until I could scream at the sight of a drawing board or a newspaper. Mr. Hanley. No, I'm frightened. Very frightened. You see, Mark's murders are so messy. His fans love blood and pistol shots and poison and spike doors and charred bones and... and acid. Gee, Alice, look. Brother O'Keefe locked in the cellar and it's filling with ammonia gas. Uh-huh. And that model Julia upstairs in the pantry. Yeah. How's he ever going to save her? Him locked up like that. Times Square? Okay, mister. Say, you read Brother O'Keefe today? That guy's really in a jam. I think this von Sewell's getting tired of that babe's double time. He's going to kill her yet. Today. Yeah, but, well, yeah, I read it. 
tire, Bill. What'll it be? Toast and coffee? Yeah, and the telegram. Yeah. Why do you read Buzz O'Keefe this morning? I think this Fonsoul fella's gonna murder that chick, Juliet. He's reading books on flesh-eating acid. If he's gonna use that stuff, it's goodbye, Juliet. She ain't gonna keep that classic tassy long. <laughs> Buzz O'Keefe. Oh, no, not this time. Juliet's a goner. Buzz O'Keefe. 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 Golly, I remember the night Buzz O'Keefe was created nine years ago. Mark and John hadn't seen each other since they graduated from college the year before. It was our first wedding anniversary. And we were at a small nightclub uptown. Oh, well done, you old bat. It's about time you showed up. That's right, John. We thought you'd never get here. You know, you've been promising to come east for a long time. Took me that long to get over your saying yes to Mark and no to me, Jurgen. <laughs> uh, uh, making any progress in the commercial art field, Mark? Well, this freelance business is all right in spots, John, but... But we do all right, John. Oh, I see. Like that, huh? Mark, why don't you get into a steady line in art? How about newspapers? Political cartoonists do well, or... Well, say, why don't you do a comic strip? Good money in it if it catches on. Well, Mark, try that. I guess they don't like his sense of humor. That's you right. said anything about humor. Comic strips aren't funny anymore. Get up a good blood chiller, an adventurer for a leading character. A detective, maybe. A, a guy who's always getting into tough spots and getting out of them again. Crime, the gory, or the better. Well, it's, it's an idea. Look, look, Mark. Do me something to show around. About a week's strips. The balance of the story and outline. I'll sell it for you, Mark. What do you say? Oh, why not? Uh, I, I think a detective would suit me best, though. Should have an Irish name. Let me see. Brian or Keith. Oh, Keith. Oh, Keith. That's good. Oh, look. How about calling him Buzz? You know, sort of a busy-sounding name. Buzz yeah. O'Keefe. Buzz O'Keefe. Yes, Buzz O'Keefe is swell. Uh, waiter. Yes, sir? Bring us another round. We're going to drink to Buzz O'Keefe. Who? Never mind. You'll know him soon enough. <laughs> And that's how Buzz O'Keefe was born, Mr. Hanley. John Slater and my husband, Mark, became partners. John is a promotion man and business manager. Perfect success story, hmm? Not quite. There were lots of things we didn't figure on. See, Mark worked hard and late to meet newspaper deadlines. He never went anywhere. I worked hard with him, I guess. I modeled red swim, did some search work and crime. We thought that the strip would let us lead a normal life after we got it going. Well, it didn't work out. Then, John Slater began taking me off. Oh, it was Mark's idea. He brought it up that afternoon. John dropped into the studio about... about two years ago. to discuss a concert. Hello, Drudges. What's buzzing today? Drudge is right. I'm in a mess here. Mm -hmm. Another O'Keefe is... He, he's on the top of a building holding onto a high-tension wire, and Concrete Head Joe is cutting the wires, and what And I... I'm rooting for Concrete Head Joe. <laughs> How are you, John? Hello, well, Julia. Uh, just dropped in to tell you about the new five-year contract I've got for us. How about celebrating? Oh, I can't, John. Too much to do. But say, Julie's tired of working. You were good to step out. Why don't you two celebrate? Good hunch. How about it, Julia? Well, the idea's pretty appealing, it's... If you really don't mind, Mark. No, no, not at all. Run along and have some fun. That should never have happened, Mr. Hanley. You see, I thought John Slater was over his crush on me, but I guess he wasn't. And I guess I... I realized, too, that I was sick of Buzz O'Keefe and what he had done to nine years of my life. And that I was sick of Mark, too. Well, one night about four months ago, while we were at a cocktail party, Mark came out into the garden and he, he found me in John Slater's arms. 
there was no scene. Oh, not then. We didn't talk at all until later in the car on the way home. I knew Mark's been drinking heavily, but he seemed sober to me. Finally, I couldn't stand his silence, and I said something I'd been meaning to say for a long time. Mark. Mark, I want you to divorce me. Mm-mm. Out of the question, Julie, darling. I need you near me for a while. It's more convenient. You see, I may want to kill you. Mark. Yes, Julie, kill you. This is what kind of a fool you take me for. Don't you think I know that that leech Slater is taking away from me? I do all the work. He gets the same royalties I do. And now it's you he's taking. Or has taken... Mark! Mark, you're drunk. Not that drunk, darling. Not that drunk. <laughs> I didn't close my eyes that night. I, I wanted to wake Mark to hear him say something that would assure me that he hadn't said what I knew he said. Well, the next morning, Mark came down to the studio in his robe, as he always did. He, he seemed quite normal. Mm. Good morning. Good morning. Hmm. Wonderful day and all that. Good night's sleep. Uh, how about my morning cup of coffee, darling? Mark... Mark, last night we... Hmm, last night? Oh, last night. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a ball we had, wasn't it, huh? I remember parts of it, like spilling the Manhattan all over Mrs. Drew or Droop or whatever her name was. And then there was... And then there was the drive home. Huh? Drive home? What about it? Oh, now, don't tell me I was feeding you. Great, Scott, won't I ever learn? Mark! Yes, Julia? Nothing. Here's your coffee. Thanks. Now, you run along. Let me work. Oh, before you go, there's something you can tell me that will help you. If you were a beautiful model named Juliet, and you were going to be murdered, what would be the most horrible fate you could come to? That was the beginning, Mr. Hanley. First, I thought he was really planning a murder for his cartoon detective to solve. And then... Well, one night, we went to a reception a publisher gave for Jim Tull, the mystery novelist. While I was dancing, Mark and Tull sat down and began to talk. When I came back, they were sitting in an alcove, and they were deep in conversation. They didn't notice me as I stood close enough to hear them. You mean to tell me you haven't yet figured out a way to murder your character, Juliet, Mark? Well, I have some ideas, but none of them quite satisfy me, Jim. You see, there's so many ways to kill a beautiful woman. And the man who's going to do it hates her so. Uh, I thought you might have a suggestion. Why murder her, then? She's so proud of her beauty, so so arrogant. Well, wouldn't it be a more fitting revenge for your murderer to maim her? Disfigure her? I've considered that. And it is the best. But for my purpose, she must be killed. Maybe I can do both. Why not? You've created a shallow, treacherous beauty. Your readers will relish seeing her beauty destroyed before she dies. Jim, I think you've got something there. That's what I'll do. <laughs> or draw, rather. I think I can do both by using a bath of flesh-eating acid. <laughs> I can just see the murderer. Oh, heaven, Julie! Julie, darling, are you all right? Well, what happened? Well, Mark, you didn't have to kill your character. It was the next day that I first came to see you, Mr. Hanley. After I left you that day, I, I came back to the apartment to find Mark working feverishly at his table. I stood behind him as his long, slender fingers brushed in the pure light. Mark? Hmm? Mark, why did you model your Juliet's apartment and her terrace? After hours? Why should I draw one from imagination when I have a perfectly good one from here? Makes it easier, that's all. You're even putting in our fish pot. Very observant of you, my dear. Yep, I've got good use for that little item. Oh? Have you noticed the size and shape of our fish pond? Well, I... No? Well, I measured it the other day. It's five and a half feet long, two feet wide, and 18 inches Mark, you can't mean... Ah, but I do. The perfect coffin. <laughs> and by the way, Julia, 
in tomorrow's episode when he a gallon drum a passage. <laughs> Down and eat your breakfast. Yeah, 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 sure. Gosh, looks as though Bud O'Keefe is going to have a murder to solve soon. Mansoor's buying the acid today. Ed! Okay, okay, I'm eating eight eyes. Sam, with pants and glasses to the ceiling, you're sitting reading the newspaper. Come on. I've got to finish with Bud O'Keefe. Hmm. Acid Mansoor is buying today. And for my tailor yet, just like to me, was coming. Okay, Mrs. Jones, uh, ready for your permanent now. Oh, <laughs> you're reading Buzz O'Keefe. Ain't it something? All Juliet's boyfriends are murder movies. And the yes is, well, isn't it just too horrible? <laughs> She's going to get him with a thing. I bet it's going to be in the fish pond. Oh, horrible, ain't it? <laughs> hey, look at this. So Buzzle saver. Buzzle key. Buzzle key. Buzz. 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 mighty apt to happen to her in real life. Yet, of course, it could be just coincidence. Mm, that reminds me of a friend of mine who was always blaming things on coincidence. For instance, he'd always nick and irritate his face while shaving. Then he changed to mole and started getting swell shaves. He said, oh, that's just a lucky coincidence. But I noticed that he kept on using mole and he kept on getting smooth, comfortable shaves. And gentlemen, this is why. Mole brushless shaving cream contains a special protective film. This special film helps guard your skin against tiny, almost invisible nicks and scrapes that make your shaves uncomfortable. As a result, you get a really pleasant, comfortable shave every morning. So why not try it tomorrow? Remember to ask for Mole. The brushless shaving cream that puts face protection first. And now back to Jeffrey Barnes. And act two of the comic strip murder. Julia Stetson sits in her penthouse apartment telling the district attorney about her husband's plan to kill her. Kill her precisely as he plans to kill his comic strip character, Juliet. Kill her by submerging her in a large fish pond filled with deadly acid. <laughs> As you say, Mr. Hanley, Mark isn't well mentally. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have run away long ago. Well, after Van Sul, the comic strip character, bought the acid, Mark did the same thing. When I asked him about it, he only laughed at me. He showed me the labels and said it was dry cleaning fluid he bought from a tailor. He was going to clean the upholstery of the car himself. Mr. Hanley, its contents are in the fish pond right now. Look, today, this morning I had an attack of hay fever, so I came down to the studio later than usual. Mark, he's very late. Well, this is the day, Julia. The comic strip murder's finished. I've got the actual murder taking place in three days of stretch. I've had them done for some time, but I've hidden them from you. Hidden them? Yes. But since I'm throwing them in this noon, I think it's only fair for you to see the fate of poor Julia. So here, take a look. But, Mark, this man... That's right, Julia. You see, it wasn't you who sent the acid-filled wine bottle to Julia. It was a new character. Well, her husband. <gasps> yes. Looks a little like me, doesn't he? Well, he's been watching her. And hating her. See how horrified Julia is. Look at the wonderful expression I got on her face in this panel. When her husband takes the hypodermic needle out of his pocket. Good, hmm? And look at the action in these panels. See? He grabs her arm here and she stops to scream, but he gags her with his hand and plunges the needle into her neck. See? It's horrible. A needle in her neck. Uh, and here, the final touch. Masterpiece of tenderness. 
her husband kisses her gently on the forehead before putting on his rubber gloves. See? Here? And then he lowers her gently into the fish pond. And she can't move a finger to stop him. But Julia, you're trembling. I've never seen you so interested, so affected. Oh, should I take these away? Maybe you'd rather not no, see them. No, no, I... I mean, yes, I, I want to see them. Good. The last panel's the best. We show Juliet's husband calmly smoking a cigarette as he looked with a big smile on his lips. What's going on in the fish pond? Of course, we can't show that. But you can imagine. Can't you, darling? <laughs> Mark finally left me to Henry. But his last words to me were, I'll be back late, darling, around midnight sometime. You'll be here, won't you? That's the story in every detail I can remember. I see. Mr. Henry, Mark's going to be here any minute now, and I know. I know he's going to try to kill me because, well, tonight's the night Juliet, the girl in the comic strip, is going to be killed. Mm. I'm frightened, Mr. Hanley. I'm frightened something will go wrong with our plan. Mr. Hanley, you won't let him. I, uh, I mean, he won't have time to... No, no, no. No, Mrs. Stenson. He won't have time to murder you. I'll be behind the screen every second. At any rate, if something does go wrong and he reaches you before I have time to interfere, use this revolver and use it quick. All right. And I'm to stand at the far end of the terrace. Yes, as far away from the fish pond as you can. Well, you better... No, 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 don't worry about a thing, Mrs. Benson. I'll be behind the screen. Get our first ritual over with. Then I've got a real surprise for you. Where is that? Mark. Mark, what are you going to do? What's that needle for, Mark? Well, now, really, Julia, dear, after all, this can't be news to you. We've gone over it before. You should be past being frightened by now. Take it in your arm. No, no, Mark, no. Oh, stop squirming. No. It won't hurt. That's why I'm doing it. No, no, no. You're trying to kill me. No, no, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Julia. Julia, you fool. Give me that gun. Let go of me. All right, Mr. Stetson. They were blank cartridges. Mrs. Stetson, I arrest you for the attempted murder of your husband. <laughs> what did you say? You can drop it now, Mrs. Stetson. It's curtain time. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, you saw him try to use that needle on me. It's for a poison or a drug, you saw him. Yes, poison you put into it this afternoon. Poison you put into your own hypodermic needle. Oh, we know your husband has been giving you injections for hay fever. What about the acid? You and John Slater bought that acid, not your husband, Mrs. Stetson. You and Slater had motives for killing Mark, so he wouldn't give you a divorce to marry Slater, so with Mark dead, Slater would get your husband's royalties from the Buzzle Keep strip. And the plot for the entire Juliet secret. That, that's why she gave me that. She gave me that story. Why, I, I, I thought it was such a good story, too. But she was leading to this crime. You, you, you little... The most ingenious part of the whole thing was calling me in on the case. If I believed the story she had just got through weaving for me, and if she had shot you, it would have been a clear case of self-defense with the district attorney as her star witness. But they always slip up somewhere. What do you mean? How? You forget that today was your wedding anniversary. No! So I was lucky enough to find that out. Mrs. Stetson, a man who is going to murder his wife, doesn't arrange a surprise party for her at midnight. He... Mrs. Stetson, come back here. Stay away from that parapet. Julia, don't climb over. You'll fall. Come back. No, nothing, Julia. If you don't like it, come and get me. Stanley, stop her. She's trying to walk along the ledge and then escape with the fire escape. Oh, good Lord. It's 50 stories down. She's mad. Julia, look out. Julia, you're going to... Oh! Good heavens. Julia. Julia. Oh, good God. Mark. 
Go to a hotel for the night. I'll get in touch with you in the morning. The, the bell. I'll... Gentlemen, we come to the end of tonight's exciting Mole Mystery Theater presentation of the comic strip murder. <laughs> this is <laughs> what's so funny. Oh, 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 boy, what a comic strip. It's called The Little Shaver. <laughs> it's all about this guy who makes it straight to his face while shaving every day. <laughs> Oh, oh, is that funny? Well, it sounds very funny. Uh, what's <laughs> happening in the strip today? <laughs> well, here's where he dreads to begin his shave. <laughs> and here's where he nicks his belt. Well, say, why doesn't someone tell him about Mole? <laughs> that foil, the comic strip. <laughs> well, then there wouldn't be any problems. No problems, no comic strip. <laughs> well, friends, it's true. Mole does put an end to shaving problems. Mole helps guard your face from irritating little necks and scrapes because it puts face protection first. Because, you see, Mole's special film has more real body and substance than light, fluffy cream. It gives your razor something to ride on. And then, also, Mole's special film contains a blend of beard-softening ingredients and non-irritating oils that are actually of medical purity. Mole is made of official United States pharmacopoeia ingredients. Same as used to fill doctor's prescriptions. Yes, in every way, face protection comes first when you use Mole. So your first Mole shave is really pleasant. And day after day, as that special film helps guard your skin, your shaves get better, better, and better. When you shave with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the brushless shaving cream that puts face protection first. Now, once again, Jeffrey Barnes to tell you about the Mole Mystery Theater play for next week. For next week, ladies and gentlemen, I have chosen a classic short story of suspense and murder by the eminent W.W. Jacobs. It is entitled, The Interruption. So, mystery fans, we invite you to be with us next week for an ingenious tale when you will learn the secret behind The Interruption. <laughs> Original music for the Mole Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. The comic strip murder was written by Corporal Frederick Nato. Until next Tuesday, this is Dan Seymour saying good night and good shaving with Mole. The brushless shaving cream that puts face protection first. Every day, thousands of men and women supplement their diet with IY, ironized yeast tablets. Is your diet deficient in iron? Do you need more vitamin B1? IY tablets give you extra iron to help build rich red blood, extra vitamin B1 to help keep nerves steady, help you maintain pep and strength. To help keep vigor and vitality, take ironized yeast. They're small, easy to swallow.